Hi folks, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is uh, I'm starting a new small series of uh, uh, it will take time but I'm starting off starting it off where I'm trying to intuitively introduce you to few important concepts uh, in uh, engineering as a whole not necessarily electronics engineering uh, which are useful from a research point of view uh, also from a product point of view and which you might not have thought that these are actually very relevant to a practical application okay let's say uh, uh, mathematical mathematical constructs like transforms laplace transform fourier transforms how are they actually relevant uh, when you actually build a system uh, when you are uh, trying to uh, engineer a product let's say when you are working in a company how do you, how do these two talk to each other uh, many people, I don't know, it's sadly because of the education system, at least undergraduate education system in our country, uh, many institutes do not really teach you the intuitive uh, reason behind many of these mathematical constructs uh, or uh, tools, as you can say. These are actually mathematical tools uh, which could be used to do amazing things. So, uh, one such example is Fourier transform. So, I will start off this series uh, by talking to you. I have uh, purchased this uh, uh, writing pad, as you can see. Uh, so to record my uh, written lectures so I'll start off with uh, trying to make you understand how uh, Fourier transforms uh, help in uh, understanding how uh, a practical system is built and how it helps to improve the quality of the system okay uh, let's get started without further ado uh, uh, and to add to that let me know how you feel about this kind of lectures and whether you need and uh, uh, other uh, concepts that you would like me to cover like this. So I will try to as much as possible keep mathematics actual equations to the minimum. I want you to get this intuitive understanding which I myself have got quite late uh, in my uh, career. Uh, understanding intuitively concepts uh, has many advantages one is you it will help you apply it into uh, specific applications and another thing is you don't have to consciously remember it okay it comes to you naturally it's like uh, learning to walk or learning to drive you can never forget it it's like learning to swim so that's that's the that's the importance of imbibing uh, in concepts intuitively okay so that would be my overall uh, overarching aim of making these video lectures but please do give me your feedbacks uh, and comment below and uh, thank you for your support and help help spread the word and let me know how you feel about it let's get into the concepts So uh, let's get started. Uh, as I have told, today uh, we'll be covering uh, uh, intuitive aspects of Fourier transforms. Okay, that's why we have uh, titled it as understanding Fourier transforms. Okay, I would I will try to refrain from the mathematical constraints, not because I don't want to go into it, but because I want you to get a, a practical and intuitive understanding. As I have told you. Okay, so let's get started first. Let me rub this off. So I am using Autodesk uh, to record my lectures if, in case anybody is uh, interested in knowing. Okay, uh, so let's talk. Let's say I have a sensor, okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a resistive sensor. So what me, what, what it means is, so I, it's a resistor, okay. It's not an inductor, it's a resistive sensor. The thing is, this, res, this sensor, Uh, what it does is depending on uh, let's say it's a pressure sensor depending on the pressure applied this resistance value changes but the thing is this resistance value in its baseline pressure is let's say around 160 ohms okay with the maximum pressure applied this will go to maybe around uh, let's say uh, yeah with the maximum pressure applied it let's say it goes to around 165 ohms okay and uh, that's all so there is no ne the downside uh, that it doesn't go down so it goes up okay so this is the working range of this resistor or this uh, working range of the sensor okay now i want to actually build a system that takes the sensor and displays it onto a uh, computer monitor okay so i have the sensor and I want to hook it up with some system like uh, a microcontroller board, okay, to which we have connected a display, okay, and I want to show, see this resistance here, okay. How do I go from here to here is the thing, and how does Fourier transform help in this? That is the whole idea, okay. So let's say uh, we have a readout of the sensor 
with time baseline okay and this would be if it's a, if this is a readout uh, this would be this resistor resistance in ohms okay now the let's say i get the readout like this okay and this is total time is let's say around 10 milliseconds okay so this value i i can come to know that this is fluctuating between around 160 to 168 ohms let's assume around 158 to 168 ohms okay this is how the values are changing now what do we understand from here let me just rub it now Okay, so I have the sensor. Let me draw it again quickly. Okay, I have a sensor, time, resistor, and it changes like this. Okay, some prop pattern that varies between 158 ohm baseline, this line, and 168 ohms. Now, I as I told you, I am having a sensor, right? Uh, we know that the time, uh, the timeline in which the sensor property change is very less. It will be around in the millisecond range okay now if you look at this signal this signal if you look at this signal it is changing quite rapidly this is very rapid change okay so i if you look at the real data real data doesn't change that rapidly this would be like a microsecond change in signal so what does that mean this change is caused by not by my signal but this change is from the system noise okay this change is from the system noise. Now, if I can get rid of this system noise, then I would get a more faithful readout of my resistance values. Okay. So, my more faithful readout of the resistance value would be something like this. That is not changing that much. The other one is changing like this, right? Because we know that such high frequency changes are not there in my system. Such high frequency changes can only come from noise. Because as you know, ideally noise white uh, noise is a white white noise. That means it uh, comes out in all frequencies. If you take the frequency range and amplitude, when the transfer function function is one across all frequencies, it is called white noise. Okay. So now, so this much is the idea of the system. You got the idea of the system. Now how? Now how do we, so what do, What is our purpose? Our purpose is to remove this noise from the signal so that I go from here to here. Okay. Now, let me change the color. Now, I have to go from here to here, right? As I have told. So, what does that mean? Here is where Fourier transform comes in. I will write Fourier transform as Ft. Okay. Here is where Fourier transform comes in. So, what we can do is, just like we make signals, just like we do addition, A plus B equal to C, what we can do is, we can always construct any signal. Let's say I have a signal like this. Okay. I can always construct any of the signal by summing up sine waves. Okay. Let's say I have sine waves of different frequencies. Okay, these are all sine waves, sinusoidal waves of different frequencies. Okay. If I add these up, plus plus up to infinite frequencies okay if i add these all up with sufficient weights okay w1 w2 etc then at some combination of these frequencies and these weights i i have to get this this signal right because some combination of these frequencies will give me this signal correct so this is what fourier transform does 
what fourier transform does is fourier transform helps you get whatever be your original signal which is this as a sum of weighted combination of all these frequencies so that is fourier transform this way what you can know is you will understand once you know what is the why why weight is required because some frequencies will have may more major contributions to this signal than other frequencies because if you look at our case we know that the signal is coming from white noise uh, our signal is coming from a low frequency signal right it's in the millisecond change so that means that major major part of the signal will come from low frequency components do you understand that it will come from low frequency components given a cut off frequency and the noise components will come from high frequency components no so if we do a fourier analysis of our signal our input signal then what we will get is if you have a frequency spectrum which is f i will have and this is the weights or amplitude i will have weights of different different frequency components ideally infinite so this will be a continuous signal okay where the major part lies in the low frequency region and but still there is contribution from the high frequency region okay let me rub this out now so as i told i have my signal here and i want to go from here to somewhere here where there is it is more smoother because the low frequency is a signal correct so when we do a fourier transform of this what we get in reality is the information about the frequency spread of the signal correct now once we know that i my my sensor is changing at a very slow rate i can always do what i can always do a filtering once i have this information once i have this information i can put a cut off frequency that okay beyond this frequency i am sure that none of the information in this frequency range will is coming from my signal it is not coming uh, we have seen that once we know this thing uh, we will know that after your cut off frequency which is fl this is noise purely contributed by the noise there are some this uh, issue with my uh, recording so i am continuing so this is not at all from the signal as we have seen this with this knowledge which comes from the fourier analysis analysis i will know my cut off frequency for filtering right then what i can do i can just make a low pass filter to cut off at this frequency right so this will make my signal to noise ratio better because i am getting most of my like 99% of my signal from my signal itself and less contribution from the noise the now contribution from the noise will only be from this region where i am giving passing the signals where i am cutting off the contribution from the noise will not be there this way you can hook up your sensor to ad converters before that you can do the filtering okay this will help us get more signal information than noise information in your converter and depending on the bit width of your converter 10 12 16 24 you can faithfully reproduce your data and digitally handle it and display it using a microcontroller microprocessor etc okay i hope you uh, understood the concept which i was trying to uh, trace to you and uh, let me know how do you feel about this give your feedbacks uh, as comments below uh, so and you understood the importance of fourier transform right how in a practical system if we have a sensor uh, if we let you take a resistor how you can reproduce this resistor more faithfully with higher fidelity and higher signal to noise ratio snr if you understand if you do a fourier analysis of your input signal okay so this is a very important mathematical construct theoretical concept which has direct implications okay on your product design okay 
hope this was uh, useful to you let me know below and uh, give me your feedbacks and comments and share with your friends thank you very much